Welcome to the World of Horror Podcast with Mom and Mac. This is the podcast where we share our love of international horror. Everyone has their fears, but we are not afraid of subtitles. Before we get into it, fair warning, these discussions will include spoilers and language which may not be suitable for all listeners. Let's move on to our first segment, Mom and Mac Chat. Hi, Mac. How's it going? Hi, Mom. It's going. How are you? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, I... Okay. I feel like I've had anxiety my whole life, but oh, maybe just the universe was like, oh, it's Mac's birthday coming up. Let's make all the effects of it hit his body like right now. And granted, I do have stressful things going on in my life right now, but, you know, getting like indigestion, neck pain, jaw pain, all these things that were like not an issue for me before. And so I guess it's a in actually a good thing because now I'm being more mindful, but that's me being optimistic. It's It, it sucks and I don't like it. <laughs> I wish it just wasn't happening, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I totally get that. <sighs> <laughs> Got to do your like breathing and though actually my jaw is a lot better because I had gotten a night guard and then everything got worse. And then I find this is my fourth time going in to get it, you know, adjusted. And I was like, can the dentist please adjust it? Like no offense to the hygienist. They're lovely. But I was like, you clearly aren't doing a good job. You know, like I was like, Hey, I have ear pain, jaw pain, all these things I never had before. So like, can you please fix it? I was putting my foot down. Like I demand, I paid $700 for this, like make it work. And they did. So that was nice. Oh, good. So it's working yeah. now as it's supposed to. And my jaw actually feels like it's less in pain. So that's what it's supposed to do. So great. <laughs> Why didn't they great. just have him adjust yeah. it the first time? Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't get I don't I mean, it must be nice to be a dentist. I mean, I know you have to do like surgery or whatever. Um put, be all up in nasty people's mouths. Put crowns in Ugh. or drill. But I mean, <laughs> I just feel like if none of that's going on, they just come by for like 30 seconds and they're like, Yep, that's your mouth and um see you. Five hundred dollars, please. Months. Yeah. Yeah. So that must be pretty nice. And they get paid like what, a bajillion dollars? Uh, but roughly. Yeah, I think I think it's roughly a bajillion. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I I know my dentist is always talking about her horse and I'm just like, "Hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. You have a horse. <laughs> That's cool." <laughs> I would I don't I won't say her name, but she has a name that I thought only children had. Like Susie or something like that? Um, kind of like that. Yeah. It's yeah. just one of those like names Mini. that you really only hear, you know, people yelling at their kids across a playground <laughs> or something. <laughs> <laughs> that reminds me, once I had when I was a host, uh one of the people who put their names down, her first name was Flossie. Oh, that's an old timey name. Mm-hmm. And she was old. She looked like old money, kind of old, you mm-hmm. know? And I was like, wow, they don't, like, I, f- I feel like you have an estate. Yeah. <laughs> like, if your name's Flossie, you have an estate. <laughs> I don't think I've ever <laughs> met a Flossie. That's amazing. Right? Yeah. <laughs> How well, are you? I'm fine. Um, it's June. Both my boys have their birthdays in June, so it's always a big month. And... um. Well, my honey has a mystery illness and it's Mm. just really disturbing because he's been to two doctors and he's in the emergency room today. And it's like, God, people are like, I don't know. Yep. No idea. But he has um, intermittent fever. What? But he doesn't have any cold symptoms. He has headache, fatigue and fever that like just comes and goes. And um, how do they not know? No, Like like. congestion no coughing or cold symptoms and so it's real weird but um Mm. he's been out of work for several days now i think one two three four days um poor guy and they were like well if doesn't go away if fever comes back or doesn't go away by sunday go to the er so 
he's in the ER. So that's, that's so unhelpful. I know it's that's the latest that I've heard. And of course, you're not supposed to go on Google, but of course I consulted <laughs> Dr. Google and um they don't know shit either. So just real weird. I, I really need to stop uh, consulting Dr. Google. I think Dr. Google has made me worse. Um Yeah. I'm, I will look up just so I, w- the other day I had to laugh because I was like, it it, it kind of snapped me out how insane the result I got was. It snapped me out of the, of the Google frenzy because I was looking up just, you know, I'm realizing all these symptoms I'm having. It's, it's just all stress. And then I focus on the pain and then it never goes away because I'm focusing on it. Like, I'm not saying pain is in everybody's head, but for me, I do think it is. And I looked up this one symptom I was having, and the first thing that came up was just like, warning signs of a heart attack. And it just made me laugh out loud. I was like, well, I know it's not that. And like, okay, I just need to go do something else right now. (laughs) Yeah. If it's not a heart attack, stroke, or cancer. um, Yeah. I'm good. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Yeah. I totally, I totally get it. Yeah. Stress is like, it's a killer but it is a killer i mean literally it's i don't know man like i it's it's wild though all the ways in which it affects your body like who knew that clenching your teeth can make your eyes hurt and your back hurt and all these things like goddamn but i have just been learning a lot about like muscle like massage and i found all these massages you can do for like your face muscles. And I, at first I was like, this shit's not going to work. I'm just still going to be in pain. And it worked. And that was very crazy to me. I feel like I might be cut, turning into like mm-hmm. a very like, I don't know, <laughs> like <laughs> new agey kind of like, guys, no, you got to try this breathing technique and then you'll feel so much better. <laughs> well, I, yeah, I, I know what you mean, but like breathing is really good and mindfulness, yeah. you know, does work. Yeah. Yeah. And it's it's wild how, I, I don't know, like the cycle of like anxious thoughts when you really try, because I don't really meditate and I've not really been good at it, but now I'm understanding the utility of it. And it's just wild when you try to empty your brain, how easy it is to like, as I feel like also if you have ADHD, this might even be more difficult to stop getting on these, you know, because I'm just, I'm calming my brain one thing comes up and I find myself like two minutes later being like, oh, oh my God, like I'm, <laughs> I'm there again. Okay. Wipe it clean again. You know, it's, uh, it's not easy. Yeah. No, I think it is really difficult for most people, but also people with ADHD to actually, um, <laughs> turn it off because I, your brain is like, it's like a, and your brain just is like zoop, zoop, zoop. You know, it goes down all these like branches and stuff. And um, yeah, <laughs> it's not a lot of fun. No, I really wouldn't wish anxiety on anyone. Like I have, I feel like long-term anxiety and depression and not that we have to compare the two, but I would almost think that maybe anxiety is worse. Like yeah, it, I, I don't know. Like obviously they're both horrible, but anxiety is like I hate it. Like I'm so, mm. I tr- I just truly, anytime I have a way more sympathy for annoying people in my life now, because sometimes you realize like, oh, this person has just like crazy amounts of anxiety and as annoying as they might be, their brain is like a nightmare, you know? And I, it's not an excuse, but it gives you, it makes you not hate them as much. Yeah. I, I remember I was in a meeting one time and this person was just like, move, you know, jumping from topic to topic to topic. And she's like, I, I, kn- I know, I know. Just imagine <laughs> what it's like inside my head. And yeah. then she just kept, I was like, oh, Jesus. Oh, God. <laughs> but everything that is wrong with me besides my depression is because of my anxiety, mm-hmm. you know? So like my OCD and my intrusive thoughts and I mean, all these other things that I have wrong with me, you know, they're like, oh yeah, well, uh, but it's because of your anxiety. And I'm like, I don't care (laughs) where it comes from. I hate it. (laughs) Yeah. And I started taking this like, so I said, I need a little boost, boost a rama because 
it's spring, but I don't feel as good as I usually do in the spring. And I guess the winter was particularly tough. And when the sun came back, I did, I was like, ah, like I did feel that like relief, but I, I could easily spend several days on the couch if I'm not careful. And so I said to my shrink, you know, can you give me something that will help? And um, she did. And it had some side effects that I just, I refuse to live with. So we're having a little, you know, meeting next week, but I'm just like, I mean, can't you just give me, I mean, I know she can, I know that there are things that can help me, but she's always like, Oh, have you heard of this? And I'm just like, I just cause it's new doesn't mean it's the best thing going. Right. I, why? I don't know. I, I really like my psychiatrist. I've had like so many now and some some of whom have prescribed me things that make me feel like I don't know like nightmare levels of horrible but she like listens but she is also on that like new med tip and I'm like can you give me a classic yeah <laughs> can I can I get a tried and true <laughs> I know I know the one she gave me like she started just throwing out like MDMA and I'm not opposed to stuff like that like I think microdosing Ooh. is probably a really great thing and and heard mdma is really good actually yeah well this is not i don't know this is like what i'm taking plus like something like mdma i don't know but it's all in one very expensive <laughs> <laughs> tablet um i'm just like yeah no what else you got so we'll see if she comes up with anything else but at this point i'm just like how about if i just double what i'm taking <laughs> i mean i have done that before under you know prescription i have done that before so i know that could work but yeah anyway why does it have to be so tough why can't it just be like i don't know can they make the invention where you can just step into yeah a big machine and they're like oh this is everything that's wrong with you that would be awesome i used to think that's what like going to the doctor was like and then when it wasn't that i was like what the fuck well i don't i don't I mean, the Star Trek: The Next Generation was kind of like that, you know. This the the scanner would like, you know, <laughs> tell you what was wrong with you, and then I don't know, fix you. But I guess we're not there yet. So, <laughs> gosh, if they can't even tell what's going on with Mister C, that's like I can't oh. imagine how stressful that would be. Uh, yeah, like, and here God. I'm like H one N one. No, well, no, I mean, unless he's like handling dead birds there's no chance yeah, that that's probably what he not. has but also like those symptoms don't add up to that at all it seems wild to me that they're like well we don't know what this is but if it happens again let us know like well it probably will happen again because you didn't identify it stupid <laughs> yeah and i mean he had a he had before this he had a sinus infection and he's like one day he's like i smell smoke like I smell not not a, like a stroke. Oh, but okay. like Freaked he, me out. I said I'm like pipe smoke or like tobacco smoke, and he's like, yeah, like tobacco smoke. So I googled that, and that can be um, a sinus infection. Mm. So they gave him like tons of antibiotics for that, but um, then this fever thing happened. I'm just like, well, <laughs> is the sinus infection gone? Like I yeah. don't. Like, I feel, anyways, I'm tr also trying to be, like, I care, but I'm also trying to, like, my sponsor's like, It's not like, up to you. Oh, when did you get your medical degree? I'm like, yeah, I know, I know, <laughs> I know. But, you know, I can't help it, but I can. You love so, him, you know. I know, but it's really, I just need to, like, stop. Yeah. You know, because there's nothing I can do about it. I feel like that's the horrible thing about anxiety too, is that it's this weird belief that you there could be something you could be doing that will prevent suffering in the future when like 99 times out of 100, that is not true. Mm -hmm. You know, like there was, there's absolutely nothing you could do or something that did happen. You had no power over it happening. Like, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, <laughs> kind of like... Um 
the boy in our first movie. <laughs> now he's got some fears that um unfortunately all end up being true. <laughs> <laughs> and worse. Yeah, and worse than he could have ever imagined, actually. <laughs> oh my gosh. I I think I needed this movie like today, because it 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 is kind of like anxiety and I don't know, irrational thoughts, the movie. Yeah. In a way. Yeah. It's so, a very paranoia like movie. Yeah. And it's so ridiculous. I think I think absurd things are are really are are hitting well for me right now because uh, mm-hmm. life in general feels a little bit absurd sometimes. Where you're mm-hmm. kind of like, you know what? Honestly, all I gotta do is laugh right now. <laughs> you know, that's <laughs> really funny. I thought it's really funny. Like I felt like that too, like when similar things were going on in my life a few years ago. Uh, yeah, I felt like, and it was kind of on the heels of COVID, which itself was really absurd. So yeah. I think you're right. I think when life is like, you can't, you it's too much to understand. Yeah. Watch you some like freaking <laughs> absurd cinema. Yeah. You'll just, I don't know, it, it it will just make everything seem stupid. And it is all stupid. It really, I'm, honestly. <laughs> Most of the shit is bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> like, y'all, the other, I've been having just a time. I always feel like I have bad luck around my birthday. And then the other day, I just look out, like, you know, just. In the morning, let me just look out into my front yard. My car's got a flat tire. I was like, when did that even fucking happen? <laughs> what are you kidding me? I just, <laughs> like, just like, like screamed like, ah! like why? Um, but you know, that actually ended up being not that bad because the tire guy, he stayed late just to fix my tire and it wasn't that much money. And I was like, you know, there are nice people out in the world. That's pretty nice. But anyways. <laughs> Society. <laughs> it's our first film in our squishy body horror. And man, the I feel like this is squishy body horror, the movie. Like mm-hmm. the sound effects people really were working mm-hmm. overtime on this one. Don't yeah. listen to this one with headphones on <laughs> like I did. <laughs> um, but a brief plot summary of society. An ordinary teenage boy discovers his family is part of a gruesome orgy cult for the social elite. And honestly, I feel like IMDb is kind of like giving it away here. Like, yes, that is the plot. But um, and I did know what the ending was going to be before watching this movie because it just was spoiled for me. But I guess even still, it it still doesn't make it any less horrifying to watch. Like I felt sick this time watching it. I kind of needed a break. Um, <laughs> it was directed by Brian Usna and written by Woody Keith and Rick Fry. It stars Billy Warlock, Devin DeVasquez, Evan Richards, and Ben Meyerson, with cinematography by Rick Fichter, edited by Peter Teschner, music by Mark Ryder and Phil Davies. It was released June 12th, 1989, just a few days after my brother was born. Wow. And... June 11th, 1992 in the U.S. with a runtime of 99 minutes. <laughs> um, I did watch this on 1.5 speed. I think you can watch it. And then you can make it a cool one hour. <laughs> <laughs> I think with this one, it's fine. I mean, unless you're really hung up on the details, which I feel like, like I was telling Mac before we started, I feel like if I would have watched this, At the time, like in high school, um, this would be something that I would have watched over and over again and like found all these wacky details. Like today, um, Harley Kozak's denim dress was like, I I just really liked it. And that's just like not important to the plot or anything. But I was just like, do I like, is that a ridiculous dress? I don't know. It's kind of a cool (laughs) dress. And like, Yeah. yeah, so that kind of stuff but i mean if if you <laughs> um are are just watching it for a podcast or something i think it's fine to just yeah. like, watch it 
at one and a half speed. Yeah. And <laughs> I I think I'm really coming to love the also absurd like 80s vibe. I don't Good. know. For some reason, at one point, this kind of movie didn't do anything for me. But mm. lately, like after we watched Chopping Wall, I thought that was more fun than the first time I watched it. And this time too, because sometimes when things are too ridiculous, I'm like, I can't, there's nothing to hold on to. I'm like, this is too much, but I, I like it now. <laughs> yeah. Some of the dialogue in this is like so fucking ridiculous, but I could just imagine it being the kind of thing, especially if you watched it, if you were high, I mean, this, some of this dialogue is, is, is Stupid. really crazy. And I watched the kill count for this and there's, the line delivery is like really insane. And um, James was just like, bat- he's like, let's hear that again. And he was just like, <laughs> rerunning like people saying their lines a couple of times. And yeah, it, it's really fun and weird. It's weird. It's just, yeah. yeah. And I like the message. I feel like, you know, I, even though it's kind of a parody of the message in a way, it's like still one I agree with. So yeah. I liked it. So we begin with a sweaty young boy with a mullet. Well, I say young. He's probably like in his 20s, maybe (laughs) 30s, as is every teenager. Though that's a good thing because there's a lot of nudity. I don't want teenagers to to be playing that. Um, We hear some distant laughing. And um, yeah, it's kind of a shaky cam shot with a lot of weird angles. He grabs a knife from the kitchen and the laughing gets louder until a woman turns a light on and calls out, Bill? And... Next, we see Bill, the main character, talking to his therapist. He says that he's afraid of everyone and that his life has been a nightmare and that he feels like something bad is going to happen. (laughs) I think Bill has anxiety. (laughs) Did they film my therapy appointment? (laughs) His therapist is very unhelpful and is just like, you know what? That's totally normal. You're a teenager. It happens. Also, I just want to say very casually dressed. Yeah. Yeah. The 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 therapist. Yeah. Yeah, he's very chill. He, I feel like if you redid this movie, Stephen Toblowski could be the therapist. Oh, yes. He would be great at it. <laughs> My favorite uh Stephen Toblowski line is from his uh role in Glee where he goes, "Who is Josh Groban? Kill yourself." <laughs> That's like <laughs> the best Glee moment. <laughs> um And he, you know, he says to Bill, like, you know, it's very normal for teenagers to feel like they don't belong. And as this happens, Bill bites into it. This already looks disgusting from the outside apple and finds that it's full of worms. Then the opening credits show this like very weird kind of red maroon. Like it's kind of blurry. You can't really see, but it's definitely an orgy of some sort in slow motion and there's a lot of wetness, sliminess, and some wet alien figure. So next we see Bill playing some basketball with his friend Milo, and we're introduced to Bill's sister, Jen, who asks him to get rid of Blanchard, um, because he says that I think he sees Blanchard's car, and she's like, you know I can't see him anymore. And they live in a very over-the-top, like, fancy house, like, mansion, Um And we see her, the sister getting dressed. Well, we see her taking whatever she's wearing off and then put something on. And um, she is looking for like a dropped earring and she finds a boy hiding in her closet. Bill comes and kicks him out of the house and um, like their parents come in and the reaction from the parents already is very weird. Like they're very touchy feely with the daughter and the dad's like, you know, honey, I thought we said, you know, you weren't going to see that Blanchard anymore. She's like, yes, daddy. Ooh. Um, and there, she's having some sort of like, it's so funny. They called it a coming out party. Yeah. <laughs> well, Which I just think no. is, I know, I know that's like, yeah. but you know, now if you said I'm having a coming out party, people would be like, oh, you're gay. Cool. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> and you're going to have a party for it. No, I, I, that just went. Right past me. Um, I mean, we don't really have, I don't, well, I don't know, maybe in the South, they do have coming out parties yet, you know, coming out to society, you know, is the idea. But um, that blew right past me. But you know, it didn't is later on the movie, 
Uh, Bill receives a telegram. <laughs> yeah, right? Like, Which even in 89, you'd be like, uh, what? <laughs> yeah, <a> telegram? <laughs> telegram? <laughs> um, and, you know, the the mom's like, oh, there's going to be this, I guess, is it Ted the tycoon guy, whatever? He's yes. going to be there. And, you know, oh, how great. And it's very weird. And then Jen, the sister, asks Bill to zip her up, which is very weird to do to your, for your brother. Um, I mean, obviously, like, I know Americans, they, I know in other countries, it's not that weird to see your family members naked, of course, like, and I think it'd be better to move something towards that, you know, like, not have any weirdness about nudity in general. But clearly, this is supposed to be weird, you know, yeah. um, very intimate. And he notices there's this like weird bulgy thing on her back and her back is extremely sweaty. And he kind of like touches it and she's like, oh, like, what is it? And he goes, oh, nothing. It's just back's kind of wet. She's like, well, I'm not taking a shower again. I don't know. And <laughs> <laughs> Bill can't make it to Jen's coming out party because he has to go to debate at school. And I don't even know what the time is. Like, what know. time is this debate club <laughs> happening? <laughs> When's the party? <laughs> very weird really good questions yeah, <laughs> yeah there, there's no timeline no. that makes sense um mm. it suddenly turns to day at some points like in the end of the yeah. movie it's day. i was like whoa how much time went past <laughs> um, so as he's bill you know bill's like a cool guy i think you know he's on the football team he's got a mullet the other guy total <laughs> dork he's got glasses pff, nerd and um bill already has the crowd you know on his side, but as he's talking about school uniforms and if they're going to have them, this girl in the front row is like opening up her legs to show her panties, which distracts him and also angers this cheerleader who has maybe the most appalling acting in the movie, but is my favorite kind of appalling acting. Yes. She, she made me laugh. Like her delivery is horrible, but great. And oh, everyone's is though, I think. Except- yeah, this is true. I don't know the Poindexter guy. He's he's actually he's, not he's bad. Good. Yeah, and yeah. Blanchard, I really liked. I thought he was really good. Yeah, he feels like a normal human, which is amazing in this movie. Because even Bill, I do like Bill, but he he's you know got that hokey acting like over the top. Um, but yeah, Bill gets distracted looking at her panties, and then somehow the cheerleader in the crowd sees this even though she's way in the back row and that pisses her <laughs> off but bill brings bill even manages after that to bring it back and still get every, he's like uh but yeah what i mean about uh uniforms is we don't all want to be looking like that guy and like points at the nerd and everybody's like yeah fuck him um <laughs> and so then bill returns to his therapist to you know talk about winning the game and the debate his therapist asks, how do you feel about your family? And he says that his family's great, aside from a little incest and psychosis. Huh? <laughs> this is like he drops that out of nowhere. <laughs> and he says that, you know, his family doesn't like him or his friends, and he fears that he was adopted because he doesn't even look like them. Everybody else in the family's blonde and he's brunette. And yeah, I'm pretty sure if that is the case, like they literally could not have had had have had you like if you your parents both have blue eyes and you have brown eyes those aren't your like one of them's lying you know (laughs) (laughs) um at home he knocks on jenny's door looking for some suntan lotion and you know as she's showering he just gets a glimpse and you can't really see because you know it's one of those shower doors that's like you know obfuscates the view but you can tell that it's like it's like her front torso is twisted around you know like and it's so the prosthetics and stuff are so fake but i love it it's so good like she's you know you could just see because her boobs look insane i feel like that's the main thing you see is her silhouette she's got these giant boobs and the butt on the front and so he's just looking because he's like what the fuck and he opens up the door but she's naked and covering herself and is like what are you doing he's like oh i'm sorry i was just looking for this you know i'll go um all very weird. So outside, um, the gardener is with Bill's mom and dad, and they're admiring like a plate of slugs that the gardener has. And poor Bill. I mean, if this was happening to you, I bet you would just feel gaslit and insane. Um, <laughs> he speaks to them, but you know, it's just awkward and feels off. He leaves and he 
next he's at the beach with the blonde cheerleader and he's putting suntan lotion on her body and also we see these like two kids like army crawling behind him (laughs) because he also keeps trying to like grope her and she's like no which now i'm seeing though is probably just a detail that like she's not like she is a normal person i believe the cheerleader i think so yeah yeah like she's not into all this weird sex stuff and yeah because she wants to get invited to Ted the Tycoon. What kind of name is that for a high schooler? Um, <laughs> she wants to get invited to Ted the Tycoon Ferguson's party and is just asking, can you get us invited? And then the two young boys steal the suntan lotion and spray Billy and the girl with it. <laughs> and she's like, my hair! <laughs> <laughs> Bill then runs into Clarissa, the girl who is spreading her legs. And um, there's this amazing scene where he's like crawling to get the suntan lotion she grabs it and the camera pans to her looking up at him and she squirts it on his face you know looking very sexual and goes don't get too hot and um then he runs into just a a very massive woman and what is the point of this woman's character like what yeah so that's clarissa's mom and yeah but there's something wrong with her brain like doesn't clarissa say that like she i don't know if she's like been to many too many shunt parties or whatever Um, (laughs) but something has happened to her and i don't get what the point is like if we're just supposed to laugh at her oh for sure i I mean mean, yeah but like she's quite quite fat and um she's got this like kind of i don't know zombie like expression on her face So she's dumb and she's fat. But Clarissa says something like, I don't like the things that she does. And I think Clarissa knows about the society, but Mm -hmm. she's not, she's not, she doesn't approve of it. Yeah. So I think that's the point. Her character makes no sense because it's like, why is she, she's with, you know, Ted the tycoon and the and the nerd on their side. They want the nerd to win student council. So that's why she's flashing him in the beginning. But then it comes out that she she's not with, with it. Billy. It's, it's so it doesn't make any sense. But she also, yeah, in the sex scene, she's all twisted around too. So Yeah, there's no that part's weird. Um they just needed him to have like a female, you know, love interest that wasn't his sister or something. Who was a former <laughs> playboy playmate oh she was Mm -hmm. that makes sense if you look at her that that totally tracks (laughs) um so then bill runs into david blanchard who has a recording that he really needs to hear and first it's jen's parents saying that (laughs) they're talking like the parents it's a recording of the parents talking with jen about her coming out party and we hear the dad being like you know, first you need to have sex with someone your own age, and then it'll be with us. What? And then Jen is speaking with a friend about how Todd Ted Ferguson is going to be her first. Billy obviously goes into a fit over this, but Blanchard's like, hey, like I, I just took the recording. So Billy grabs it so that he can go to his therapist. Meanwhile, Jenny's dad and um, the judge discover a bug in one of Blanchard or in, in Jenny's earring. It's one of Blanchard's bugs. So now they know. I guess they always were suspicious of this guy because they didn't want her dating him. And, you know, now they know he's a snoop. So Billy, you know, he thinks that David rigged it, but he still wants to get proof. So he goes to his therapist's house and the therapist says, well, we'll listen tomorrow. Um, So Billy just gives his tape to the therapist, which is like your first mistake. Come on, Billy. You dumb, dumb. So then Billy and the cheerleader have a little fight. And when Billy goes to his therapist, the therapist says that what Billy is doing, spying on people, is illegal. And when he plays the tape, the recording is entirely different and completely innocent, you know. So now Billy just looks like a crazy person. So the therapist lays out the situation. He says Billy has to follow the rules or bad things will happen. And I don't want to have to prescribe you drugs, but he, you know, gets out his little notepad and Billy's just so confused he then asks david to bring him a copy of the tape but when he arrives he sees that david has been in a horrible car wreck and is being loaded into an ambulance he tries to retrieve a record the recorder from the accident but the cop tells him to leave um and this cop is just so smarmy and great we see him multiple times 
and you know when when we see like the there's a body being hauled off but like we can't see if it is actually him so when billy gets home i love this scene because he comes home and he's like guys the craziest thing just happened Blanchard was in a horrible car accident. Like, yeah, we know. We it's horrible. Oh, Jenny's like, I, I sure am gonna miss him. <laughs> like, just a crazy thing to say. But he's been invited, they say, to Ted Ferguson's party. And everyone's like, like, hey, well, what are you gonna wear? And Billy's like, to the funeral? No, to Ted Ferguson's party. <laughs> That's one of the best scenes. Um, and Jenny's very, very excited about it. So at the party. Billy dances with Clarissa again. You know, they still have eyes for each other. Milo, his friend, who's definitely not in on it because the parents don't want him hanging out with Milo. He arrives and he wants to talk about Blanchard. But Billy is like hypnotized by beautiful women. And so he goes with Clarissa into a tent where then Billy confronts Ted and tells him um, and is like, you know, hey, did what are you sleeping with my sister and ted's like yeah i totally did fuck your sister and everybody else thought it was so hot that they all fucked her too and so then they start fighting but you know clarissa's is like no don't do this you know like you're only <laughs> going to make it worse or something um and then ted says that he did kill david <laughs> so okay ted throws billy into the pool and everybody laughs at him but clarissa actually seems to be hurt by this and feels bad for him clarissa then you know, when she's talking to Billy, this, all of the <laughs> scenes with her are so weird. Like who wrote these? She's like, oh, you know, there's a, there's a button on your shirt and it's hanging on by just a thread and then just pulls it off. Oops. And then they have sex. Okay. Um, she says that he is so fresh. The music then changes and Clarissa appears to be in an anatomically impossible pose. Like she's laying down seductively, but her legs are turned like the wrong way. And Billy kind of falls out of bed, but then it's back to normal. And he's like, you looked weird. I don't know. And she just laughs at him. So the cheerleader's friend brings the cheerleader by. So she sees that um, in a separate car because they were not invited to the party so that she can see that Billy is with Clarissa and she's really upset. But then they kind of get freaked out by something and decide to leave. Clarissa asks Billy how he would like his tea cream sugar or would you like me to pee in it that made me laugh that totally threw me off i was like what the fuck is happening and then clarissa's mom comes in and coughs up a hairball i don't know this movie's crazy you kind of just have to watch it gosh her delivery of cream sugar or would you like me to pee in it is amazing like 10 out of 10 i would expect like somebody hired just because they were a playboy bunny or like a playboy model to like not have good delivery but i think this woman actually does a pretty good job <laughs> or she she fits the tone so next morning billy's off to school but in his jeep he finds a blow-up sex doll labeled clarissa with a male doll in its mouth and uh the cheerleader shauna confronts him about last night and as he's like putting away the blow-up doll and she's mm -hmm. like oh god what's wrong with you <laughs> <laughs> so then billy brings the blow-up doll inside to his house where in the parents bedroom the mom, dad, and Jenny are just there together, which is weird. And the dad is rubbing Jenny's shoulders. And it's so funny because they're doing that. But then Billy brings in the sex doll and Jenny's like, how shame on you for bringing that into your mother's room. As if this isn't <laughs> happening right now. Um, mom says that Billy will make such a great contribution to society. Billy's creeped out by this and tells his dad, fuck off, butthead. <laughs> which also made me laugh because you're just not expecting that butthead um so milo and billy go to the church uh for the funeral for blanchard and milo notes that um you know blanchard doesn't really look like himself but billy says well i think they all look like that but for some reason then milo goes to poke him and his finger just goes through billy's face i mean sorry blanchard's face um because he has a beauty mark um in that spot and they just kind of, <laughs> Milo's like, well, maybe they had to do a lot of reconstructive surgery <laughs> and they just walk away. <laughs> um, so then Billy is contacted by Martin Petrie, who's the nerd, the rival for the high school presidency, because Martin Petrie, you know, he's like, I got some things to tell you. Like, you're right. There is something going on. So at their arranged meeting, he just in the woods, he discovers Petrie with his throat cut. So then he calls the, up the police. But by that time, the body's gone and there's no blood. And also the car is different. So they're just, you know, again, he looks crazy. 
And then the next day at school, um, during the, it's so funny because Petri's not there yet. I love this scene too. Billy is talking to the student body. He's like, yeah, Petri's not here. And how weird is it that he's not here? Because the guy had perfect attendance. Well, it's because he's dead. I saw his dead body. And everybody's just laughing at him. And then he looks and Petri's there and he's like, so what's all the big deal, huh? And um, again, he just looks crazy. But that scene is just so funny because his Billy is so serious, but so unserious at the same time. And just nobody takes him seriously either. So then Bill arrives at home and confronts his family again. But with Dr. Cleveland's help, Bill is drugged. Like they literally hold him down and inject him with something. So they take him to the hospital and Milo trails them in uh, his car. And Billy awakens thinking thinking that he hears Blanchard crying out. And we see like some silhouettes behind a sheet. Um, but then when he pulls it back, there's nothing there. So then Milo and Clarissa try to warn him like, hey, don't. Because also when he leaves the hospital, his car is just right there. And Milo's mm-hmm. like, dude, this is clearly a trap. And for, I don't understand why Billy feels like now everything's fine. Like I did think that he was swapped out or something because he's like, they tried to get me, but they couldn't get me. I'm going back there. It's like, what's wrong with this guy? But he drives back to his house because he's dumb. And now we have the ending, the most famous part. At home, Billy finds a large formal party in the mansion Dr. Cleveland reveals that, well, Billy was right. His family and their rich friends are actually an entirely different species from Bill. He calls them alien scum, but they're like, no, we're not alien. We've been here just as long as you have. And then they bring in a still living Blanchard who's freaking the fuck out. And then the wealthy guests all stripped to their underwear. And what I do love is that there's like so many old people here too. No offense mm-hmm. to the elderly, but I do feel like it's just a it's just a great whammy to put in your horror movie if you have old people laughing and being naked. Like it's creepy and hereditary. It's creepy in this movie. I don't know. There's and there's something about like old like the, the idea of these like old creepy people being in charge of society. I mean, mm-hmm. I guess because that is how it is, but <laughs> I don't know. The idea that they're all there just soaking it all in and just being devious, it, it works It works on me. I think it's it is very creepy. Rosemary's Baby, too. Yes, yeah. Yeah, I just think, you know, we have this image of old people, you know, stereotypically being like frail and innocent and, you know, oh, they would never hurt a fly. And then when you see them be so debaucherous – being like giddy about how evil they are. It's just, it's creepy. So yeah, they all strip to their underwear and begin the process of shunting. So they start physically deforming their bodies and melding into each other. Um, And Blanchard's like at the center of it. And Ted the tycoon tells Bill like, well, just watch because this is you next. And, you know, the, the effects in this are amazing. They do remind me of the thing. I feel like It's that level of Mm. like, obviously this is ridiculous and is like, you know, when you, when they switch to like the puppet, you know, okay, this is, they just made like a puppet, but it looks so creepy. Like when you have it be just a little bit uncanny, I think that's the sweet spot. And this would never have hit the same way if it was CG, you know, if they tried to remake this and just make it all CGI, I don't care how realistic it looked. It it would not be the same, you know? Like, at first they're, like, kissing him, and then they're, like, their mouths, like, elongate, like, Ugh. American Werewolf in London style. And then, yeah. like, the the mouths, like, become connected to his skin, and, and it's, like, this, like, uh, it's just really weird. But also you see people, like, fondling his butt and his shoulder, and it's, like, their, and their hands, hands go are going in. into his skin it's so good because there's no blood like that would be too much but Mm -hmm. it's like the hand going into his butt in particular that scene was so good because it it's clearly a fake butt you know but it just slides in and then like these actors also all of the crazy rich people did such a good job because they're just maniacal like their eyes are huge you know when their mouths are like suctioned to him and they're just like enjoying it so much and they're all wet like they're they just poured oil and slime over all these people and i I don't know it's just it's 
the sound effects are horrible, but good, but great. And um, so yeah, the the party sucks nutrients from Blanchard's body, which absorbs him and kills him. And Ted the type, Ty- sorry, Ted the Tycoon Ferguson tells Billy, like, well, yeah, the rich have always done this. We've always fed off of you, like the poor. And I mean, they just it's so uh, in your face, but I love it. I it works on me. Um, well, and- they they don't just absorb the nutrients. Um, I think I switched to us and I was writing the whole summary mm-hmm. and then I switched to a summary. The part that isn't included here is the extreme fisting scene. And that part made me sick, but I was like, this is art. I don't know. Like this yeah. is, this is beautiful and how horrible it is. Like, um, I still have to write my essay on why The Human Centipede 2 is one of the best movies ever. And I feel about that the same way I feel about this, where it's like the judge, first off, he's oily as hell. You know, he's all red and ruddy and he takes his clothes off and he's got like a cigar in his mouth. <laughs> and he like touches Blanchard's like where his beauty mark is. And he just goes, beauty. Like he almost faces the camera and is like, beauty mark. <laughs> and then <laughs> takes his fist and just plunges it into him we don't see it you know but you know that's what's happening and it goes up blanchard's mouth and like comes out and his head in that part really reminds me of the thing when its head is like that one head that like extends from the guy's body then like goes crawling around it looks very similar and it just is like this frozen face of like the mouth opening it looks like he's wailing it's so scary and yeah i i heard i heard on um from James A. Janice that apparently the actor who played David Blanchard was like really going at it. And his screams were like freaking people out because he was like, (laughs) you know, (laughs) he was, you know, playing like he was horrified. And so they laid in like some music over top of it to make it like a little, to soften it a little bit. I think that's necessary. It would be like too horrible. Cause I think the music makes it more horrible in a way. Like if it was just him screaming, you lose a little bit. But there's this delightful, like joyous music playing during it. And it it makes it worse in a good way of just like, oh, God, the suffering. Like he he does sound like he's suffering and like feels horrible. And yeah, I don't know. There's a character that actually then has like a hand as his head. Yes. Um, yeah. Later, and that is actually from the makeup artist's like senior thesis or something like that. That's it's so like cool. a reference back to his own work. Oh yeah. my god, um, I love yeah. that. Yeah. Um. So yeah, then Bill obviously is fucking freaked out. And what I love is they have you know those like rods that they use to like grab feral animals. Yes. That's what they have on him. Yeah. Um. Which seems nice horrible. Touch. Yeah. He escapes from it because Clarissa helps him and he kind of scrambles up to because then his therapist starts chasing him. Then his therapist kind of has like, you know, the Jack Nicholson as the Joker kind of face. It it looks just like that. Um, Mm -hmm. He scrambles into his parents room because because as they began to shunt Blanchard, the parents and Jenny were like, let's go. Like, let's go fuck, I guess. And so they're in their room. So. Billy goes into that room and he sees his mom, who who I mm. I, I forgot to mention. There's a great part where she just goes, "I'm not your mother." <laughs> <laughs> it's just like such a ridiculous, like yeah, everything you feared, it's true. Um, but she's in the bed, and again, there's just this impossible mass kind of around her. But she stands up, and then she's completely like, "This is all prosthetic," but. Um, it's like Jenny's head pokes out from where her vagina should be. And also her legs are turned around and she has no mm. arms and they're just like shuffling towards him. So then he runs, but then <laughs> his dad, <laughs> it just shows you like a prosthetic of somebody's like, you know, ass and his dad's face is where the ass is. And he's like, Billy, I guess you're right. I am a butthead. <laughs> And just starts making like fart noises. And so then Billy gets freaked out and leaves as they laugh at him. And so, yeah, now Blanchard has been shunted and the judge comes back up and now he has the same beauty mark on his face. And again, he goes, beauty mark. And so then Ted, Ted and Billy begin to fight, you know, and Clarissa's like, no, don't fight him. You're just going to make it worse. So, you know, he, 
they start fighting, but then, and it seems like Ted's got the upper hand, but then Billy's got the lower hand and he shunts Ted. And that part is also horrible, like disgusting. Like he, you know, sticks his fist up him. Then his hands poke out of his face, like eyeball pops out too. And he Mm. pulls him and turns him inside out. It's so gross. And then like (laughs) on the inside, it's just like worms, kind of like Boogie Woogie from, you know, Nightmare Before Christmas. It's like, that's the inside of these people. Oogie Boogie. Oogie Boogie, excuse me. Um, And I just love somebody in the back just goes, you turned him inside out. (laughs) Like Their (laughs) delivery of that line is so like (laughs) blasé. And- Everybody then is afraid of him. Like, they're like, oh, shit, don't do that to me. Um, And so he, Milo is also there. I forgot to mention he, this is kind of a stupid side plot as he travels there with Clarissa's mom um, and, you know, steals the police officer's outfit. And so, yeah, Billy manages to run away with Milo and Clarissa. And when they leave, now it's daytime for some reason. Um, And, but they escape. Yeah. And that's the end of the movie. (laughs) And yeah, it. I needed like a second. I needed to like get some water and like burp myself because I was like, oh, I feel gross. But I don't know. Like it did. It has never done it for me. But this time, this movie, it hit every note for me. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, 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 I told you before, I think the third viewing was the one. That's the for one. Me, but the fourth was not. So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it, it. I. This is not. I, I had always heard this was like a cult, you know, favorite, and I had never seen it. And um, I. This is not what I thought it was. Same. Yeah. But, when I was in college, I had a friend who loved horror movies, and when they watched this. I think the issue is they built it up as this, like, the best movie ever. And I know that's what I'm kind of, like, I'm almost talking the same way they did. But if you go into it thinking like that, you you will be disappointed. You should go in with the lowest of expectations, which is what I did this time. Because I was like, I've already seen this. Like, this movie, I didn't remember liking it that much. And then I enjoyed it. So don't go in with high expectations. Go in thinking you're going to hate it. I thought it was a lot darker than it is yeah i mean it is but i mean that scene with blanchard is like i remember just thinking like this is horrible this is sad (laughs) yes it's sad yeah poor blanchard Um, poor blanchard um yeah and everyone else is just like delighting basically in his torture and that's not that's never good um but but ferguson's death oh amazing i like it a lot (laughs) because he was just an asshole the whole time (laughs) classic like i know we said this in the last pod this is a guy that could have been named kip this is a kip classic yeah (laughs) just a total dickhead but the 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 incest stuff is is weird and and they do seem like aliens like the like the delivery especially the actor who plays the dad yeah um, his delivery is very alien like like he, well, both the parents really, but like, like there's one part in the beginning where they're like, isn't your friend uh, uh, Milo in the driveway? And he's like, yeah, yeah. And they just like turn around and like walk upstairs. Like they don't, it's like, they don't understand the mores around like human conversation. Yeah. And so there's this sort of like creep, creepiness. Um. And so it makes total sense that Billy would think they were aliens because they just don't seem to. There was a lot of there were a lot of aliens in the eighties. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I guess the whole McCarthyism thing really got oh, people. That too, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. oh, there are there are the there are these people that look normal, you know, but they're all actually evil on the inside, and we have to figure out who they are. Um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, a lot of paranoia. I mean, that's a holdover from the seventies, even. But mm. you know, um, invasion of the body snatchers and all that. Classic. Classic. Um, but yeah, I I like this movie now. I I did it before. I liked it now. Um, I don't know if I need to like see it again anytime soon. But I I I think in terms of like prosthetics, it's like oh. it makes you yearn for it again because that is obviously the movie's highlight and what everyone remembers, but like for good reason, because it's so good. Like, Mm -hmm. and 
like again, if if it if those weren't so good and memorable, this movie would like nobody would think about it at all. Mm-hmm. So it's those people who did the prosthetics deserve, I think, most of the credit. And I put the um, the the Salvador Dali paintings in the doc, um, mm. the ones that inspired. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah. I scrolled down and saw them. Yeah. Well, here's some trivia. Brian Usna claims that he back engineered the film's plot points based on special effects ideas or gimmicks, stating he was more interested in the surrealism of the story than the logic. Yeah, that tracks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? I don't hate it. You know? I saw just a little clip of him and he's so self-effacing. He's like, yeah, it wasn't the best director. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, honey, oh. you're so sweet. You know, I like you be, being real with yourself and being like, you know, because, hey, he nailed that part. So the 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 special effects. So it's like, yeah. The hospital used for the exterior shots is the same hospital used in Halloween 2 from 1981. Billy Warlock's father, actor stuntman Dick Warlock, played the shape Michael Myers in Halloween 2. Wow, that's cool. The paintings of Salvador Dali were a significant influence upon the creature designs of Screaming Mad George, who is the guy who did the prosthetics, which is, that's just like a great name. (laughs) Playboy Playmate, Playboy Playmate Devin DeVasquez said in an interview that she was used to posing nude on camera, but she had never filmed a sex scene before, so she was nervous about it. Then she found out that Billy Warlock, the other actor in the scene, was more uptight about it than she was. (laughs) Aww. Brian Usna's son, Conan Usna, plays one of the little boys who pranks Shauna and Billy Mm. on the beach. That's cute. In medicine, a shunt is a hole or a small passage which moves or allows movement of fluid from one part of the body to another. Gross. The term may describe either congenital or acquired shunts, and acquired shunts, sometimes referred to as iatrogenic shunts, may be either biological or mechanical. Wow. (laughs) That's more than you wanted to know about shunts. (laughs) What a horrible word that they chose. (laughs) (laughs) Yuzna and Screaming Mad George used Salvador Dali's autumn cannibalism and soft construction with boiled beans, premonition of civil war, as inspiration. And yeah, if you guys look those up, that tracks. <laughs> totally. Especially the second one. Yeah. The, that, that's the beans. Completely. The boiled bean was the beans one. Yeah. Well, what does Letterboxd have to say about it? It's Us Anne gave it a half star. Eric made me watch this and I'll never forgive him. I feel like if somebody made you watch this, I probably wouldn't forgive them either. <laughs> you have to want to watch this, I think. Insomniac with a one gave it a half star. I want compensation for moral damage. What the fuck is this? Why and who thought this was a good idea? <laughs> oh, I thought I thought they reviewed it a second time for a oh, second. Sorry. No, no, you're fine. I just I thought did that the other day with Quinn. It'd be so funny if he was like, you know what? I watched this again and I still hate it. (laughs) Ham Beasler gave it five stars. Well, that's an interesting way to tell your son he's adopted. Effective, efficient, entertaining. This movie fucks. (laughs) (laughs) Kyle gave it five stars. Quote, well, son, I guess you're right. I am a butthead. Oh, man, this movie was so gross. I love it. But most importantly, are we not going to question Clarissa's mom? We will. We did. We will. (laughs) Kyle, we got you. Why? (laughs) Oh, my God. Lainey Flower gave his five five stars. Serving shunt. (laughs) That's pretty good. (laughs) Pretty good. Well, how should we rate this? I guess um, slugs? Ooh, good one. You know what? Uh-oh. I'm going to give it four slugs. <laughs> I liked it. I like it more when I talk about it. <laughs> I think four is fine. I'm not going to give it a five. No. The acting is abysmal. Um, the transitions are weird. The plot is all over the place. But yeah, that last scene... I, I, Ain't nothing like it. We need it. Yeah, we we did need it. (laughs) (laughs) What have we learned? Uh, All of your fears are true. 
And worse than you <laughs> could have worse. ever imagined. It's worse than you imagined. You can't even imagine how bad it is, actually. But it'll come for you. <laughs> but even still, there is compulsive heterosexuality. Yes. So Why didn't he just get with straight. Milo? That would have been better. Yeah. I know. Milo was there. Why Milo was there for him the whole time. The whole time. Yeah, he was a real friend. They could. I guess they could be a thruple. They could. Mm-hmm. I mean. They might as well not be prudes. They've seen, you know, why not? You think Clarissa can be monogamous for the rest of her life? I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> Would we watch it again? Yes, but yeah. I need a while. A little while, yeah. Yeah. Favorite scene and or death? I mean, do we even have to say? It's obviously the ending. Um. Also, I think this would be super fun with a group. Yes, I agree. I think watching it alone will do you a disservice. But if you could be with other people amazing just be because you're there to laugh you're there to have fun who wins the you fool award i i guess ted the tycoon he fucked with the wrong (laughs) human maybe blanchard oh yeah he poked his nose in yeah maybe maybe once you find that out you're like i'll go into hiding now (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, mail it to like the New York Times or something. Like, yeah, and then find yeah, a bunker. From a safe distance. Because <laughs> I don't, these guys aren't like traveling to get people. So like, just just leave town. Yeah, yeah. good point. They don't really seem to care about getting found out or anything. <laughs> well, that was society. That's society. 